I built my first BMX bike when I was 14, 15. You know, we're building stuff out of like a 500 square foot garage. These bikes that we build here are made to go downhill fast, straight up. Hi guys, my name is Brian Matthews. This is Rip Cycles. Uh, we've been building bikes for over 20 years and having a good time doing it. That's what we're about, having a good time, building good bikes and just getting out there and ripping. I've been riding bikes for my whole life. I started riding at like five years old and my dad was, um, he was an off-road fabricator, racer, and my uncle, my grandfather. And so I always wanted to uh, build my own stuff. I built my first BMX bike when I was 14, 15, and I machined all the head tubes and the bottom brackets on my dad's lathe in our garage in Arizona. And I couldn't really weld at the time. Like I could melt stuff together, but like I couldn't really weld. Uh, so he welded it together and I wanted to start a, like a bike company. Um, but you know, I was 15. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I was in high school and chasing girls, riding BMX. And then um, years later, I moved back down here with my grandparents to help them out. And then my uncle is really the guy that I would say that got me into mountain bikes. I rode a lot of motocross before then. Uh, I was still riding a little bit of BMX, but a little. I was doing more motocross. And then my uncle, used, he rode mountain bikes all the time, dirt bikes, wild mountain. And he's like, yeah, dude, get a mountain bike. Let's go to Big Bear. I'm like, okay. So I bought, a, it was a 2009 Specialized Enduro. And the trails, there was no built trails. There was no wood features. It was like natural mountain stuff. And then I just kept going, and I remember my uncle telling me, he's like, oh, dude, you got, you got, you got the bug now, dude. I had a bunch of mountain bikes. I mean, I've ridden Santa Cruz, Giants, uh, Norcos, like a bunch of them. And I didn't build bikes for a long time. Um, I was working in off-road racing, uh, racing myself with my uncle and my cousin, and I had an awesome time. I mean, we we won the Mint 400 three years in a row. Yeah, it was amazing, I loved it, uh, but very expensive. Uh, <laughs> a lot of time passed. I got into aerospace, just doing like precision welding and welding up capsules, um, pressure vessels. And then um, it was like 2020, so everybody's bored and I wanted to build, uh, I want to start building bikes again. So I bought um, a fixture from uh, Bicycle Academy. They are overseas and it was like a thousand bucks. It was like their bare minimum because I built, I built fixtures for my original frame, but they were like hobie Um but good enough to, for what I was doing at the time. But I wanted to build like high precision, high performance mountain bikes. So I got this fixture and I started doing a lot of research on like, okay, where can I get dropouts? Where can I get bottom brackets? Got hooked up with um, Andrew at Bicycle Fab Supply. Super good dude out in Arizona. Every time I buy parts from him, like he always like writes a little note in there, like thanks, you know? And I, that's just like, that stuff to me, like it means a lot. It's more personal, you know? And that's kind of like what Rip Cycles is. We're a very small, very small company. Um, it's literally me and my dad. I think it's cool to be a small brand because you can be, personal with your your customers you know like see the the reaction of people when they see it because you know we're building stuff out of like a 500 square foot garage you know but we have everything to do pretty much anything to kind of give you guys like an idea of how we build the bikes. Um, this is our fixture that we use. Uh, got my handy dandy little angle finder here. Just put that, turn that guy on. Set her to zero. Nope, definitely not zero. Better zero that bad boy out, or else your angles are gonna be all jacked up. We set our seat tube angle. We'll call that 77. We'll set our head tube angle, and we set our axle to crown, and then we load our bottom bracket in. 
our bottom bracket, 73 mil. Head tube is loaded in. These are our notches on our down tube. So you can see we have our internal cable routing for the dropper post all the way down. C tube goes right here, bottom bracket. So when it's all said and done, you drop that in there and it's just like a big puzzle piece. C tube, we will load that C tube in. Load it in here and then we got these cool little clamps that, that run down and you're able to tighten these guys up and it centers everything out. And after a little bit of fitting, a little bit of massaging. So I got this marked as my head tube. So I know my head tube goes right here. And that gets loaded in there like that. We'll throw some magnets here to hold all the tubes in place. And then we tack, we tack in four corners. So the top, bottom, and the two sides. Same with here on the head tube. And then when we weld it, we stitch weld it. So stitch welding is we will weld one side right here, then we go to the other side, and we'll weld the other side going the other way. Uh, that helps with warping. If I were to weld the whole side, the whole right side of the bike, this whole thing would want to pull this way. And then when you pull it out of the fixture, your head tube angle's all cranked over, and you don't want that, because then you'll be riding down the trail all sideways. So we stitch weld all that stuff. After that's done, we pull the frame out, uh, again, 95% of the welding gets done in the fixture. There's a couple corners and little wraps that we do. Um, does not affect the warpage because they're so small. The welds are only about a, about a quarter inch long. Um, and since it's been locked in the fixture, 95% of the welds, everything stays really straight. So we bend all these tubes in our Cobra tube bender. The Cobra tube bender is super, super cool because you can do two tubes at the same time. So they come out both identical. And then we load our our steel uh, trusses, I call them, in our fixture. We machine our connecting tube. We load our dropouts in and we start notching. So we notch our tubes and when they're done, they fit like that. We will tack them, weld them all up. And then these are our chain stays right here. And we have measurements that we take from the ends so we know where our notches are to make it a little bit quicker on our end. And then we will put them in our mill and we'll mill them out and the finished product goes right in there like that. Giving you enough clearance for a 2.6, 29 or 27 with uh, chainstay lengths uh, up to 450 millimeters and all the way down to uh, 435. So the fixtures really, really help. Uh, without these fixtures, we would not be able to build straight bikes. Yeah, so then we just started doing this. Um, head tube angles are set at 64 degrees. Um, bottom bracket drops are 25. And rear travel is 160 mil, designed with a uh, 160 uh, travel in the front as well. I think where we're at right now, as far as where the geometry is for mountain bikes, is really, really good. I don't think you need a 63 degree head tube angle on an enduro bike. Bottom bracket drop is, I, I kept it a little bit higher. So uh, you're kind of, a, on top of the bike a little bit more. You can kind of play with it a little bit more. It's a little bit more poppy. I know the trend is long, low and slack, but I wanted to keep it a little bit more playful as well. Um, we run a single pivot, uh, the most basic suspension design you can have. Everything pivots right off this one pivot. I think that you can really get a, a good progression with the Comatics with a single pivot and you don't have to worry about 10 bearings that you have to replace. There's literally two bearings right in here that will last you seasons and seasons. We have all this stuff machined and designed here in California. We have adjustable dropouts on the rear. So you can adjust your chainstay length to accommodate if you want it shorter, longer, our bottom brackets are uh, 73 millimeter BSA bottom brackets, so super easy to work on. And all of our pivots are uh, 7075, all of our aluminum parts are 7075. And we actually, um, 
we actually have a, a one-up tool installed in the rear triangle. So if you're ever out on the trail, you can pop this guy out. One up makes awesome, awesome stuff. We were able to incorporate it in the side of our rear, rear triangle. The main thing is it's steel. It's easy to work with, it's readily available, um, it looks cool. The weight on it is is a little bit more than what you would see with a carbon bike or an aluminum bike. Uh, I think a lot of bikes nowadays, even carbon frames, they're, they have to build up their carbon so thick at the end of the day, um, our frame will be within half a pound of a carbon frame. They are right around 35, 36 pounds, and that's with like, a 38 fork, a big giant rear shock, aluminum wheels. I know we can get them lighter to accommodate for, uh, you know, if you want to climb really good. Um, the way we're able to get our weight down is to get tubing that is butted. This tube is thinner from here to here. So we can bring that weight down right here. This is in a compression load. So we don't need a lot of meat right here so we can make it a lot thinner we make these areas thicker where the weld joints are um since it's heat treated tubing it's it's air hardening so after we weld it it actually hardens the material and makes it stronger i've learned a shit ton from my dad and now uh, it's almost like the the student has become the teacher because uh he can't really see too well, but he can machine some parts. And that guy, that guy's got it going on at 61 years old. Cause I, I have a regular job, a nine to five job, still doing aerospace. And I do this for fun on the side, you know, I'll have parts that I need to get made or like a deadline that I need to make for a customer. And it's like, Hey man, like, can you machine this part for me? And he's like, okay, and I'll, I'll like literally write dimensions out on a little post-it and I'll just give it to him. And then when I come home, it's like, it's like magic. It's there. And I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. Uh, so I, I tell everyone he's my number one employee. <laughs> If you want to check out um, our bikes you can go to ripcycles.com you can hit us up at uh, ripcycles at instagram uh, dm me send me an email all my information's on there yeah check out the bikes mm -hmm.